We've already learned that isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structures. We can divide isomers even further into constitutional isomers, which differ in the ways that atoms are connected, and stereoisomers, which differ in the way that atoms are arranged in space. Within the category of stereoisomers, we can further divide these into cis-trans isomers, which we've seen in previous videos. These result from different arrangements due to restricted rotation. For example, in cyclic rings or in alkenes. There's another type of stereoisomers which are based on compounds that have asymmetric centers. Within these molecules that have asymmetric centers, we can further differentiate isomers into enantiomers, which result from different arrangement due to the presence of an asymmetric center and result in non-superimposable mirror images and a second class known as diastereomers, which result from different arrangements due to an asymmetric center, but they are non-identical, non-mirror images. Let's look at asymmetric centers in a little more detail. First of all, what is an asymmetric center? An asymmetric center consists of an atom which has four different groups attached to it. Each of these molecules has an asymmetric center. In the first molecule, the carbon in the middle is bonded to four different groups, a hydrogen, a chlorine, a bromine, and a fluorine. So we would say that this carbon is an asymmetric center. In the second molecule, the carbon in the middle is also bonded to four different groups, a hydrogen, a methyl group, an ethyl group, and a bromine. So this second carbon in the middle is also an asymmetric center. Let's look at a few molecules that do not have asymmetric centers. In this first one, the carbon has a hydrogen, a bromine, one methyl group, and a second methyl group. Because it has two groups attached to it that are the same, this group would not be an asymmetric center. What about this second molecule? This carbon has a hydroxyl group, a methyl group, a hydrogen, and a second hydrogen. Again, because this carbon has two groups that are the same, this would not be an asymmetric center. We've already learned that if a molecule has an asymmetric center, that it can lead to enantiomers or diastereomers. But why else is it important to be able to identify asymmetric centers in molecules? From a chemical standpoint, if a molecule has an asymmetric center, it introduces something called chirality to the molecule. Chiral objects are non-superimposable mirror images, or essentially enantiomers. The word chiral comes from the Greek word chire for hand, so in other words, chiral objects are things that can have left or right-handed versions of them, such as your hands. You have a left hand and a right hand. Achiral objects are systems or objects that are superimposable mirror images. In other words, you could rotate one around and have it exactly be the same thing as the other object. With chiral objects, since they're non-superimposable, like a left and a right hand, you could put your two hands together so the thumbs are aligned and the pinkies are aligned, but then the front and backs of your hands are on different sides. If you align the front and backs of your hands, then your thumbs and your pinkies will be on opposite sides. So your hands are examples of chiral objects. When we have a molecule with one asymmetric center, it will also be a chiral object. Let's look at this short video about chiral molecules. In this video, we say that, see that each molecule has a carbon with green, blue, red, and white atoms attached. So are these molecules the same? These could be 
the same, or they might be mirror images, or they might be non-superimposable mirror images. Let's try to line them up to see what we get. Now we see that the green atoms are aligned and the blue atoms are aligned, but the red and white atoms are no longer aligned. Maybe if we turned it a different way, we could get everything to line up. Now we see the red atoms and the white atoms are aligned, but the blue and the green atoms are no longer aligned. This means that these molecules are enantiomers, or non-superimposable mirror images. What is the practical implication if a molecule has an asymmetric center, or is chiral, and has enantiomers? These two chemical structures represent the two different enantiomers of carvone. In this one, the structure represents a compound which smells like spearmint. This second compound, which looks like a mirror image of the first, smells like caraway, or kind of like fennel. These look very similar, they look like mirror images, but because they're non-superimposable mirror images, they're enantiomers, and the body will detect them in different ways. Many biological molecules will end up having enantiomers, or asymmetric centers. Amino acids, will have asymmetric centers, and many carbohydrates will also have asymmetric centers. Biological systems will process enantiomers very differently. When we want to understand enantiomers and chirality, we have to realize that molecules are really three-dimensional structures. So it's sometimes difficult to represent a three-dimensional structure on a two-dimensional piece of paper. Because of this, chemists have developed a system of drawing three-dimensional structures on two-dimensional paper. You may have noticed in the previous slide that I introduced some new kinds of lines to the chemical structures. These structures are called wedge dash drawings. When we have a structure, the lines, just as straight lines or regular black lines, are considered to be in the plane of the paper. When we have a dashed bond, that bond is considered to be going behind the paper. When we have a dark wedge bond, that bond is considered to be coming out of the plane of the paper toward the viewer. These wedge dash bonds help us to visualize three-dimensional chemical structures.